Do you ever venture through the endless landscapes of Minecraft and finally stumble upon an epic rarity? The mushroom biome. Just to realize it's kind of boring. That's why I'm transforming this piece of garbage biome into a better version of itself. The first thing I had to do was of course get rid of all the vanilla mushrooms because custom ones just do the job so much better. I created six different mushrooms of varying sizes for both the red and the brown types of mushrooms to replace the ones we are used to, but I also designed an additional mushroom type which I made three different color variants of just to spice up the otherwise mundane color scheme. And then I simply got to copy pasting them all over the island, which in itself was a decently straightforward task, but that didn't mean it didn't take me many hours of procrastination to do. Especially since I used to listen to the Harry Potter book series while building, but uh, I recently finished the last book, so now I just sort of listen to YouTube in the background, which more than often just turns into me spiraling down a YouTube rabbit hole on my second monitor whilst not building. So yeah, that's quite the tangent, let's get back on track. As you might have noticed, I was placing all the mushrooms in patches around the island and leaving empty space in between. One of the reasons for this was because I wanted a village in the middle of the island, especially since I think structures are what often make the uncharted parts of your world worth exploring. The second reason was just for aesthetics, because an uneven distribution of mushrooms would create a more organic look contrary to the mostly uniform generation of a normal mushroom biome. And also I felt like the island would get way too crowded if I just plastered every inch with shrooms and it would be more like a mushroom jungle rather than a mushroom field. On one of the island's appendages, I decided to build a bigger version of the village houses, sort of like a house for the rich person who doesn't want to live near the peasants. And I did this thing, which I do with most of my village slash house builds, where I create a set of arbitrary rules that apply to the way I allow myself to build, which I find often makes the houses look a lot more similar, but it also makes the process of building them just be this fun little challenge. So at this point, I was also almost done with the island. The last thing I did was connect all the different structures on the islands with some paths and also add in some lampposts along those paths to light it up at night. Okay, before we continue to the cinematic fly around of the island, I just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed because you helped me not just reach but also pass 100 subscribers. That's amazing. So if you're sitting out there and you're not subscribed, consider helping me grow my channel even further by clicking that red button. Anyways, on with the video. We fly toward the far end of the island and are met by an uninhabited wilderness. An abundance of large toadstools and other peculiar fungi rule this ecosystem. A rare species of wild cattle roam the fields. Their mushroom-covered backs indicate a well-balanced symbiosis between them and their fungi-infested home. But as we venture further onto the island, a sheltered little village comes into view. The residents of this village clearly chose this island for its secluded beauty and the mystical aura that seems to accompany these types of biomes, keeping monsters from ever appearing no matter how thick the darkness becomes. On second glance, it becomes apparent that the villagers has made no agricultural advancements on the island, but must solely be sustaining themselves on the natural resources of the island, likely with a diet mostly of mushroom stew which to some might seem as a repulsively boring way of life, but for those who choose to reside in a place as otherworldly as this, it is but a simple trade-off for the benefits of an unconventional environment that provides both shelter and sustenance, which is also why it's not just the common folk who are drawn to this place, but also those of higher standing. A path leads out the village. Along it are many lampposts with shimmering lanterns, but their light seems unnecessary next to the bioluminescent spots on the many mushrooms. And in the distance, a large house, which the path undoubtedly leads to, comes into view. It sits on top of a small hill in solitude from the other houses, but seems neither sad nor forgotten, but rather quite self-important, and as a place where only those who consider themselves as more than just common folk could possibly reside. As we rise up to soar above this magical landscape, the plethora of colors that the island houses crowd our view. But this does not prevent us from noticing the last structure on the island, a seemingly overgrown watchtower that surely has ended up unused due to the secure state of this island. But maybe that's not the case. You never know when a tall wizard-like tower harbors a deeper secret. 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little story as we flew around the island. I definitely had a ton of fun making this, and I can see myself making more transformations in the future. But until then, why not watch some of my other content? Maybe if you want to feel better, you can watch this video where I fail miserably at Bed Wars, or if you want to watch something else where I'm building, you can watch this other video where I build an entire zoo in Minecraft. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Bye-bye!